Good morning from California, where we have been for the last five weeks preparing for our next adventure. <laughs> for those of you new to our channel, my husband Matt and I have been traveling in the United States with our two cats in a 13 foot camper for the last one and a half years. But right now our camper is nicely stored away and we are flying to Europe with a one way ticket and our two cats. We will share more in our next video on why we're doing this and where we're specifically going and all those good details. But this video will specifically be going over flying internationally with cats since we thought it's a pretty unique situation. And if you aren't really re interested in those requirements, you can skip ahead a few minutes to the actual flying part. We will do our best to document our journey, although with two cats and a bunch of luggage. I'm not sure how well we'll do at that, but at least we can give you an update at the very end once we're at our destination and maybe provide even some tips if all goes well. Welcome back to the Becca and Matt channel, where you get to join us on our journey across the globe. In this chapter, we're excited to share our biggest move yet as we leave the landscapes of California behind and embark on an incredible venture to a farmhouse in Switzerland. But there's a twist, because no adventure is complete without our two furry companions, Peach and Grace. And now, they'll be joining us in this relocation to an 18th century farmhouse surrounded by rolling hills, picturesque meadows, and the sounds of cowbells. Throughout this series, we'll capture the next year living and traveling throughout Europe. And as we navigate this transition, we'll document every adventure along the way. From local traditions to tourist traps, we can't wait to take you along our year in Switzerland. So subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a moment of our journey from California to Switzerland. Cheers! Cheers. Okay, so preparing the cats for international flight is a lot more complicated than you might think. It's not as simple as just booking a flight and letting the airlines know that you're bringing a little furry friend. <laughs> but fortunately, there is a website through the USDA that tells you all your requirements of your destination country. So we put in our destination and then it told you everything that you're required to do for that country. So we had to get our cats microchipped. They had to then get a rabies vaccine the third thing is then you had to find an accredited vet to fill out a health certificate that is valid for 30 days. So we just went ahead and did all three together um, to make it easy and have less trips. And that was fairly smooth, um, expensive, but otherwise it was easy. The certificate is valid for 30 days, so you do have to make sure you're flying within that time frame. Otherwise, you have to redo the certificate. Then 10 days before you leave, you have to send that health certificate to the USDA in your state to have them endorse it. And then they send it back to you endorsed before you leave. So I don't love how close to departure you have to do that. Um, you used to, at least in California, be able to go into their office, but I don't know, maybe in the last few years it's changed because now you have to send it in by mail or I think you can even do it online. But saying it all out loud, it doesn't actually sound that complex, but it was just a lot of moving parts, paperwork, dates you had to juggle, and that constant fear that you're gonna mess up and not be allowed to fly. So <laughs> now that it's all over, we have officially gotten the endorsed health certificate back so we can fly in the next 36 hours. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we will do our best to film the uh, journey, but for now, wish us luck and we will see you tomorrow for an 11 hour flight to Switzerland. It's time. Traveling with two cats. Someone's already upset. Hi, Mama. It's okay. All right, it's an 11-hour flight. Yeah. It's 4.30. We're at the airport. It's 5.31. We gotta go. Oh. Back. All right, so we made it to the pet relief area. And they're not using the bathroom. 
So it's pretty secluded. You, we got the place for ourselves, which is good. I don't know how that would work if there was a dog in here. We brought the cats in, although somebody could walk in at any moment, but it seems like the girls are liking it. Peach is really worried about her appearance. Grace is being a big scaredy cat. Overall, going through security with them was as we expected. So because of the flow of things and we're a little later than we anticipated, we decided instead of the private screening room and waiting, we would take them out of the carrier and walk through the metal detector. And so Peach did pretty well, but Grace did as expected. She screamed, clawed, cried, and made it a big scene for everybody. So everyone else enjoyed that, but not us. We made it we are officially in switzerland after 17 hours we have made it we're healthy we're safe and we i think have adjusted quite well so far we've been here for officially a week now and although we're all a little bit still jet lagged we're getting into our groove here slowly but surely but i thought i'd go ahead and fill you in on our experience with flying with the two girls aka our cats and let you know the few things that we would do differently next time so overall the whole experience actually went pretty smoothly well essentially a lot could have gone wrong that didn't which is great um, there's no delays we didn't overpack our bags we had the correct paperwork for the girls we got through customs the flight was smooth so we, it could have been a lot worse, but of course flying with two cats is stressful in itself. So it still was a very long journey and it went exactly as we anticipated. It was long, it was stressful, it was sweaty, <laughs> but again, we made it. So basically everything takes longer with the girls or with cats, right? We gave ourselves three hours and by the time we parked the car, got our luggage, got the cats and made a check baggage area, we had less than two hours. And that kind of was an issue because then when we got to security, they offered us private screening, but they told us we would have to wait and they didn't know how long. And they would recommend that we just go through regular security, which it probably was a good thing we did because by the time we got through everything and got to the gate, we were already boarding. So I'm not sure we would have had time to wait for a private screening. So next time we will definitely make sure that we have a full three hours at the airport, just so that we don't feel rushed. The other thing, which we knew this would be the most stressful part of our journey, but that was going through security. If there's one thing I would do differently, it's absolutely getting a private screening. Unless your cat is not like ours maybe you can get by with it but for grace especially no like she was crying she was clawing she wasn't even trying to get away she just was trying to get on top of my head or under my skin i mean i she was just like on top of me and it was stressful and you have to wait for your bags to go through security and no one's really helpful and they just think it's funny and the last thing you think it is it's funny and so you're just standing there trying to hold it together and not lose your cat so definitely the most stressful experience so i would highly recommend a private screening i don't know how those go because we didn't do it so i'm curious how that'll go for next time but it will definitely be on the top of my list for our next journey but once we got through security, the worst was really behind us. We did find a pet relief area, so it was nice to regroup, although the girls didn't use the litter box or eat or drink, but we assumed they would be probably too stressed for that. They also didn't love being in the carrier. They're not really used to being walked around in it. So definitely something I wanna work on here is just getting them more familiar walking around in the carrier. So they're used to being kind of jostled around, maybe even put them on public transportation so they're used to more people being around them. We'll see. It's not exactly fun to put them into a stressful situation, but I think that would have helped. 
on the plane or actually at the airport if they were a little bit more comfortable in their carriers. But once we got to our gate, it was ready to board and we actually had a middle seat in between us. So we had gone an aisle and a window seat hoping no one would be in our middle seat and sure enough, they weren't. So we did have a little bit more space. That was nice so that we could give the cats more space under our seats and they didn't feel like they were right in the aisle where everyone's walking. Another thing that I would recommend is bringing more pee pads than you think you'll need. We did have an accident. They didn't seem to freak out with takeoff or landing, but they both seemed to get a little nauseous. Grace did throw up at some point on the plane. I don't know if it was from being nauseous or just stress. And then she did pee 10 hours into the flight, which our flight was 11 hours. So she almost made it. And she did try to tell me, but I don't even know what I could have done for her. So she ended up peeing in her carrier. And I had pee pads and a towel in there, but of course a cat's not gonna pee right in the middle of their carrier. So she peed in the corner. Sorry, Swiss air. Anyways, after that, we landed again. They didn't seem bothered by the landing. And then we found a family bathroom where we could let the girls out again. Finally, Peach did use the litter box, so I didn't waste my energy packing a litter box and litter. Grace would have used it too, had she not already had to on the plane. They still didn't eat or drink, but um, again, we were almost home. So we put them back in the carrier, we went through custom, not a problem, we got our bags, and then we drove home. And actually, by the time we got into the car, they seemed much more comfortable because one thing they are familiar with is driving in a car, so um, they seem to be already relaxed on our way home. And then once we got here, they seemed pretty adjusted, fine, not stressed, no lingering traumas. <laughs> so of course, it was stressful, it was long, I don't wanna do it anytime soon, but it could have gone a lot worse. So moving forward, if we were to ever do this again, we would get them more familiar with the carriers. We would give ourselves more time at the airport. We would definitely do the private screening for security. Pee pads under the carrier in, on the plane. And if possible, we are flying from Europe to the East Coast instead of the West Coast. So that is a slightly shorter flight because Grace would have made it had it not been such a long flight. And also I just think generally it was like, it's hard not to get restless, right? They were ready to get out of there. They were clawing at their carriers by the end of it. Um, we didn't give them any medication to make them sleepy. So they were more bored. So in general, I think a shorter flight would definitely be easier on all of us. So there you have it. We survived. We flew our two cats internationally from California to Switzerland. And we already have some things that we would dip differently. So let me know in the comments below if you plan on flying anytime soon with your pets. And if you have flown before with your animals, definitely give us any tips that we didn't share because of course, this is our first time doing it. So we truly really don't know what we're talking about, but hopefully this was helpful. We will definitely share what we're doing, where we are, why we're here in an upcoming video. But for now, I hope this was helpful and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.